Hi. Who's here? Oh, splendid. I've got a 30% like rate on this video already. That's good, isn't it? Let's get these blinds down. And then pen and paper, dead easy, no baking trays in sight, so that's nice. Okay, I'm shutting the door. <sighs> you ready? Right, uh, I've got my pens, need some colours today. Uh, da, 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 da. Mm, yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's just going to make kind of assertive positive noises in the background for a second. All right, I'm flipping you. Let's do this. You ready? Hello, everybody. Hello. This is I, Lara, from Theatre of Science. It is you, the Science Alliance. It's the last lesson of astronomy. I am very excited about this one. So we've learned about the moon, Earth's atmosphere, all the different things that you might see in the sky. Today, we're going to look at what if you just go outside uh, without a telescope or binoculars or anything, and you look into the sky, if you've sort of done some of the right things, what you can see in the sky and how you tell the difference between them. I, as usual, have learned so much. So the first thing I asked you to do was have a look at the rhyme. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Which bits of those are scientifically accurate and which are absolute nonsense? Well, a lot of people in the comments on Facebook the other day uh, saying that stars are not little. No, this is true. They are massive. Um, people saying that they're not diamonds. This is true. They're not diamond shaped. They actually are diamonds. Like, I think they found a planet that's made of carbon, but it's like compressed into crystals. So it kind of is a, a diamond, but that's not a star. It's a planet. Stars are not diamonds. They're not, not little. Um, they do twinkle. Kind of. If, if you were stood next to a star, don't do that. But if you were, it wouldn't be twinkling. But from Earth, as you're looking up into the sky, the stars do look like they're twinkling. Why is that? Well, let's draw the creepy physics eye that scientists use to describe things. You see everything because light is bouncing off it or shining from it into your eye, okay? So imagine a thing here like this. You can see this thing because light is bouncing from it into your eye, okay? Light's bouncing from every single little bit of it that you can see, but we'll just draw a few, we'll draw a few straight lines because light travels in straight lines, okay? So that you can see. Um, <clears throat> now stars are massive and they're giving off a lot of light. They're actually making light, which is being sent into your eyes, but hold your hand in front of your face. It's not the most complicated activity we've ever done. Hold your hand in front of your face and move it slowly away. What happens? seems to get smaller. This is what happens with stars. They are very big and shiny, but they're so far away that they are essentially just little pinpricks of light, like points of light, we would say. So hardly any light from the star is reaching your eye, okay? We'll just do like one kind of little laser beam towards your eye. Why does this mean that they twinkle? Well, uh, I said to bring a glass of water and a coin. Coins are feeling a bit old fashioned these days. If you haven't got one, like a key, anything heavy that will sink to the bottom of the glass of water, okay? We're going to pretend that the water is Earth's atmosphere. We did do this in the first lesson, but we need to do it again. Um, Earth's atmosphere is all the gases, like the clouds, but also just all the air particles that are around Earth. Yeah, the nitrogen, the oxygen, loads of little particles around Earth protecting us. It's a nice warm blanket, the, the atmosphere, okay? Now, light finds it very easy to travel through space because there are hardly any particles there. But when it hits Earth's atmosphere, it bounces around. It bounces off all these air particles, yeah? So get your glass of water. We'll say that this is Earth's atmosphere. Get your coin. We'll say that's the star. Well, plop it in. <coughs> Give it a little shake and see what you see. What do you notice? Well, the coin starts... You don't have a perfect view of the coin anymore, do you? The coin starts kind of flickering, like wobbling in and out. So... If you could stare at one particular point on that coin, you would probably notice that sometimes it's visible and sometimes it's not visible. This is what's happening with stars, right? This starlight 
it gets to let's say this is the atmosphere it gets to the atmosphere and it gets bounced around and because there's not much of it sometimes the light gets so bounced around that it doesn't even end up in your eye and then maybe the next split second it gets bounced around but it does end up in your eye so the split second where the light hasn't reached your eye, the, there's no light coming from the thing into your eye. So you can't see the thing. So the light, the star just kind of switches off for a second. And then the next beam of light, if you like, does reach your eye. So the star switches on again. So this is why stars twinkle. Planets do not twinkle because they're not big, are they? They're a lot smaller than stars, but they're very close to you. So even though light is bouncing off them, just like with the star, one bit of light from a planet is always going to reach your eye, okay? It's more like the blue thing here. This is like the planet. So even if this beam of light happens to not get to your eye and that one doesn't, one of them is always going to get there. So you might not see the planet perfectly, but you're always going to know it's there. It never switches off, okay? So this is the first big thing that we need to learn. Stars twinkle and planets do not twinkle. That's going to help us tell the difference between uh, different objects later on, okay? I'm going to give you the question sheet. Here we go. Have a look at this. Um, we've got a wormy timer up again, because I know you love these. So I'm going to start the wormy timer, and by the end of the wormy timer, I would like you to have completed the question. So, the first one's the most important one. Delete the incorrect words to explain why stars twinkle. So, stars are so far away that they look like, is it points, or diamonds, or rays of light? This light is bounced about by Earth's, is it atmosphere? or clouds and is it always or doesn't always make it into our eyes so the star appears to twinkle right that's the kind of, i want you all to be able to do that really bit of brain exercise why is it not quite right to say planets make more light than stars i think that's quite tricky oh, there's a few different things you could say why is saying planets make more light than stars why is that not quite right and mars looks red in the sky how could you tell the difference between mars and an airplane with a red light on it this is what we're going to talk about next. So can you write down your ideas and say them out loud? There's a couple of reasons, a couple of ways you should be able to tell the difference between an aeroplane and Mars. What do you reckon? God, the wormy timer is speeding away. I've barely got time for a sip of coffee. Mm, made it. <sighs> probably shouldn't drink coiny water, should you? Probably not good for you. I'll give it to the plants. Okay, the wormy timer has been completed. So stars are so far away that they look like, the answer is points of light. And this light is bounced around by Earth's atmosphere. It is bounced around by the clouds as well, it's a bit more than that, it's just all the air surrounding Earth. So this means it doesn't always make it into our eyes. So the stars appear to twinkle. Why is it not quite right to say that planets make more light than stars? Well, I said that stars do make light, but planets don't make light. Planets are just reflecting the sun's light. Yeah, same with the moon. We see the moon because the sun's light is bouncing off it. We don't see the moon because it's like on fire. <clears throat> and we'll talk now about how you tell the difference between Mars and an aeroplane. Let's talk about the planets, okay? So uh, let's think about some different things you're gonna see in the sky. So you might see, let's do, um, let's do a blue circle to mean white. <laughs> and if it's flashing like this, twinkling, then it's a star, okay? So that's a star. Uh, if something is not twinkling, it's possibly a planet. So Mars, we've looked at in previous lessons. Mars, look, Mars looks quite red, yeah? It's got a rusty surface. So Mars would be red and not flashing. Aeroplanes have red lights on them and green lights as well. So an aeroplane might look like this in the sky, but the, an aeroplane light will be flashing. So if it's, if it's red and it's flashing, then it must be an aeroplane. What's another way you'd probably be able to tell if it's a plane? A red light and a green light. Boop, 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 on the wings. Uh, the other way is that the plane will probably be moving, won't it, across the sky. Whereas Mars, although the planets do move across the sky, it's very slow. If you're standing looking at the sky for like an hour, you won't see the planets move. Whereas obviously a plane will probably appear and disappear in that time. So that's the difference between Mars and a plane, but humans have stuck other stuff up, stuff up in the sky, right? 
like satellites. Have you heard of the International Space Station? Um, I'm going to have to attempt to spell satellite now. Satel, it's two, two L's, right? Satellite. So a satellite is just anything that goes around Earth, in fact. So the moon is a satellite. I suppose I should put man-made satellite to mean something that humans have created and stuck up there. So the International Space Station is it's like a spacecraft full of astronauts and scientists from all around the world, which is going around Earth. It is orbiting Earth right now. It's amazing. Um, and you can see it on a the night. There's an app where you can go or just a website to find out when the ISS is going to pass overhead and you will be able to see it. Um, and you can often see satellites actually going around Earth. We've got loads of them up there for various jobs. Satellites look white, but actually they don't make light. There's no light on a satellite. What you are seeing is the sun bouncing off the satellite. So even if it's nighttime on Earth, the satellite is so high up that it can still sort of see the sun. Um, and it, obviously they've got enormous solar panels to power them. So if you're seeing a satellite, you're probably seeing that. Um, but they will be moving probably across the sky. So they, they probably won't be flashing and they will be moving at a fair lick actually. I think I saw one the other night. It basically just looks like a star, but it's not twinkling and it's moving across the sky. So that's the satellite. Right, just a couple of other things. Um, Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system, that is yellow. Apparently, I, I've never, I don't think I've really ever seen it. I find it hard to tell the difference. I'll be better at it now because there's some tips I'll give you at the end. And um, Saturn is also yellow, although not quite as yellow as that. I'll put Jupiter there just so we've made a definitive list. Jupiter and Saturn are yellow, Mars is red, stars are white and twinkle, satellites don't twinkle and they move, planes are red and green and flashy and moving, that's fairly easy. Just wanna quickly, before I give you a quiz, talk about Venus. Ugh, I have learned some things about Venus, my friends. And I would say, I can't unlearn them, I might forget, but I hope that I don't. But I didn't know this about Venus. Right, <clears throat> start from the beginning though. Let's draw the sun yellow the true color of the sun um so mars jupiter saturn quite easy to spot in the sky you know bright colorful mercury is dead close to the sun yeah we've talked about this it's the closest planet to the sun mercury is really hard to see because it's always hugging the sun like this imagine we're looking from earth we we can we always see mercury right next to the sun we talked about this in the first lesson. It's like trying to see a candle in a really brightly lit room. If you're, obviously don't ever look at the sun with your eyes, you will really damage them seriously. Um, but if you're trying to see, see Mercury, you can't really see the light bouncing off Mercury because there's so much light there anyway. So Mercury's very difficult to see, we won't talk about that. Uh, Venus is the same, right? It's the next planet along. So it's hard to see Venus, but you can see it once it's about as far away from the sun as it can get, okay? Um, and it's called, the, it's called the morning star or the evening star. And I never knew why, and I finally get it. And to explain it to you, just before I quiz, I've got to use this little ball with a smiley face on. So come around here with me. Right, zoom in, crush. Uh, get another little piece of Lego. Nice. Okay, so this ball, we, if, this helps a bit if you saw the first lesson, I think, and we talked about sunset and sunrise, but this ball is Earth, okay? Earth goes around the sun in a year. We're not going to worry about that. We'll just talk about days. So the Earth is spinning, yeah? In the first lesson, we talked about how Earth spins, and when it's, so say that we're the face, yeah? It would be nighttime for us now, because we're facing deepest, darkest space, and the sun is behind us, and as we turn on the Earth, we start to see the sun and we call that sunrise, yeah? So you, we think the sun's coming up, but actually it's the earth that's turning. And here, the, so we're moving away from the sun, so this would be sunset for us, okay? Now, I didn't know this, right? You can't see Venus during the night time. You can't. Like, it made sense now, obviously, because when it, the sun is behind earth, so it's night time, Venus is also behind the, the earth because Venus sticks really closely to the sun, yeah? So here it's night time, you will not see Venus in the sky on a night. But as Earth turns, this is us on Earth. As Earth turns, look, there's a moment just before sunrise where 
it's a dark sky still, but we can just see Venus in the sky. And then Earth keeps turning, and quite quickly, the sun comes up, yeah? So now the sun's kind of blasting its light into the sky, and Venus has disappeared into the day sky. Um, that's when Venus is there. When Venus is over here, look what happens. We've got daytime, 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 and then we move away from the sun, and the sun starts to set, but after the sun set, there's just a few hours, like maybe three hours, where we can still see Venus. And it's just after sunset. How good is that? I never knew that. I have spent an embarrassing amount of time staring into the sky at maybe like 10 o'clock at night, seeing a bright white light in the sky and going, oh, maybe it's Venus. No, it's not. Venus is hugging the sun somewhere else. So Venus is the third brightest object in the sky, by the way. It goes to the sun, don't look at the sun, and then the moon, and then Venus very bright it's because of its atmosphere it's got a lot of carbon dioxide reflects the sunlight so yeah super bright apparently it often gets mistaken for a ufo okay i'm going to give you a quiz now and then a little bit more information then another quiz and we'll see how you do this is the sort of hopefully the slightly simpler quiz so you've got uh, five sentences and you've got four things with a letter attached to them so satellite is t plane is h planet is e and star is s so for each of these sentences i want you to decide what the object is find the letter that goes with that object and write it in the box and tell me what the word is okay so a pinpoint of white light moving slowly across the sky a pinpoint of white light moving slowly across the sky if that's the satellite write t if it's a plane write h if it's a planet write e and if it's a star write s if it's flashing and moving what is it if it's dim red light not moving or blinking, what is it? If it's a pinpoint of white light blinking on and off, what is it? If it's a dim yellow light not moving or blinking, what is it? And it will... It, the next one's going to be harder. You've got, I don't know what, three sips of coffee. It's about 20 seconds. It's okay, that was just a little smiley ball. You know what to do if you get bored? You can always like and subscribe. Or, I don't know, share this. Can you share things on YouTube? I don't know. Let's go through the answer, shall we? Right. <clears throat> you ready? You ready? I think I tend to, to rush on YouTube, but I worry that you're getting bored. A pinpoint of white light moving slowly across the sky. Well, it's moving and it's white. Uh, we haven't said it's flashing. It's going to be a satellite, so that was a T. If it's flashing red and it's moving, that's got to be a plane, yeah? A dim red light that's not moving, that is Mars, which is a planet, so that's an E. A pinpoint of white light blinking on and off, that's a star, yeah, twinkling. And a dim yellow light not moving or blinking. We did this quite fast, but if it's, if it's yellow and it's not moving or blinking, it's probably Jupiter. Or it could also be Saturn if you've got good eyes. So the word was these. Well done if you've got that. These. Okay, very small amount of extra information. And then I'm going to give you some trickier ones of those, all right? Um, last lesson was all about comets. So I don't want to go on about this for too long, but let's just have a little word about comets. So a, a comet, again, we, d we have talked about this already. Uh, we did a whole lesson on it last week, which is on YouTube if you want to have a look. But we looked at how comets are chunks of ice and rock and dirt that have somehow got out of their orbit and been flung past Earth so that we can see them. So they're lurking right on the outskirts of the solar system, maybe just past Neptune, maybe even further than that. But anyway, comets, big chunks of uh, dust with a big gassy tail behind them. You will know if uh, you are seeing a comet in the sky because for days before that, the news will have been going, oh yeah, there's a comet in the sky, ah, go outside, see the comet, it's amazing, ah, I've seen the comet before. Uh, so you'll probably know straight away. But if it's a bright thing with a streak of, with a tail, then it's a comet. We know this, don't we? Not describing it very well. It's one of those. And what did we learn last lesson? Is that some things that come off comets, they also come from other places, is a meteor. And meteors are basically like rocks, chunks of stuff that fall through Earth's atmosphere and burn up. I, I'm going to put some red there for burning and hotness. But actually what a meteor really looks like is it's a shooting star. It's what we call a shooting star. So if you see a star, that suddenly kind of whizzes across the sky and then disappears. Congratulations, you've just seen a meteor 
or a shooting star. Um, they're actually not that uncommon. You can see about seven an hour if you're in a dark place and you've trained your eyes, more of that later. So comet, bright thing with the tail, meteor, flash of white that then disappears. Okay, I've put some tricksy questions in here. We've added a little bit to the quiz, see how you go with this one. So same as before, satellite is T, plane is H, planet is E and star is S, but now meteor is I and comet is R. And a lot of people on Facebook were like, oh, I know what the letter is, and what the word is straight away from looking. No, you don't, because I'm really good at English as well. And there are loads of different words you can make with these letters. So you have to do the questions. If it's white and not moving and it's seen at midnight, what is it? It's white, it's not moving and you can see it at midnight. What is it most likely to be? If it's flashing red and green and it's not moving across the sky, what is it most likely to be? If it's white and it's moving fast for three seconds and then it disappears, what's it likely to be? A bright light with a long tail, what's that? And if it's white and slowly moving across the sky without disappearing, uh, what is it? Now, if you're struggling a bit with some of these, then don't worry, that's good. I'm trying to make these quite hard. People on Facebook were getting very irate with me and coming up with all kinds of words that it definitely wasn't. I'll give you, I, I will count to 45 seconds in my head. One of them is quite, is like a sort of trick question and you might be able to work out in what situation it would be true. Okay, getting on five seconds, four, three, two, <laughs> one. Okay, it's white and it's not moving, but you're seeing it at midnight. Well, if you're seeing it at midnight and it's definitely white, it's probably not a planet. It can't be Venus, can it? Because it's midnight and Venus is only seen around sunset or sunrise. Uh, it's not moving, so it's unlikely to be a satellite. So I'm going to say that's a star. I didn't tell you that it was blinking. I didn't tell it was not blinking. If it's flashing red and green and it's not moving across the sky, well, it's flashing red and green, so it is a plane. What could possibly be happening for a plane to not be moving? Ah, oh, it's pretty proud of this one. Um, if you're looking at a plane, but it's not moving and it's nighttime, what's probably happening is that the plane is doing this. Coming towards you. Uh, yeah, pretty good, pretty tricksy teacher question. Or going away from you. It would take you a while, wouldn't it? You probably wouldn't notice the lights getting bigger or smaller initially, so it doesn't seem to be moving. It's probably a plane and that's what's happening. Uh, if it's white and it's moving fast for three seconds, then it's disappearing. It is undoubtedly a meteor. If it's bright light with a long tail, then it's going to be a comet. And if it's white and moving slowly across the sky without disappearing, then it's going to be a satellite. Well done if you got those. Some of those are incredibly tricky. So the word was shirt. Shut was the word. Right, let's talk about galaxies. I did not know it was possible to see galaxies, but apparently it is. Quick, quick recap for the people who aren't sure about what a galaxy is, what the difference is, okay? So we've got the sun, which is a star, yeah? And all the planets are going around our closest star, which is the sun. And this is what we call our solar system. There's a bit more to it, as we've looked at in other lessons, like various belts and stuff, but that's essentially our solar system. But um, we live in a Milky Way galaxy, which is a massive collection of stars. So there's loads of other stars all around us that are in a kind of cluster together. I've seen pictures of it, like a spiral, a spiral galaxy it is. And all together, all those stars are called the Milky Way galaxy, right? So there's no, there's no other stars in our solar system. The sun is the only star in our solar system, but there's loads of other stars all around us that might well, indeed, certainly have got other planets going around them. Okay, and all those stars all collected together in the solar system uh, is the galaxy called the Milky Way, but ours is not the only galaxy in the universe. We thought it was for a really long time. It was only about 100 years ago, I think, a chap called Edwin Hubble 
noticed that some of the stars that we were seeing uh, realised that they weren't in our galaxy, they're at different galaxies. So it's, it's incredible to think, I'm just drawing little squiggles on the board, but these are all separate, vast collections of stars, which could all, most of them will have planets going around them, okay? Um, now, most of the stars that you see in the night sky are from the Milky Way. But if you go very, if you went very high up and you had incredibly good eyesight and it was a very clear night and the air around Earth wasn't moving too much, apparently you would be able to see at different points on Earth 51 different galaxies. Galaxies! 51 different collections of stars that are ludicrously far away from us. Um, and the most famous one of these is Andromeda Galaxy. It's not the biggest galaxy. It's, sorry, it's not the closest galaxy to us, but it is the closest big galaxy. So it's close and it's big. So it's quite easy to see. And when I went on a NASA video on YouTube, um, I came up, I found this fantastic way that is apparently a good way of seeing it better. So let's look at that. Okay, have you got a piece of paper and a pen? What I want you to do <coughs> is write the numbers one, two, and three, very small on this piece of paper, about three centimetres apart. If you've done the finding your blind spot activity with me, we're, we're going to do that and just take it a little bit further. So just write the numbers one, two, three on a piece of paper, but make sure it's quite small and spread them out like that, okay? One, two, three, piece of paper, spread them out. We'll pretend that number two is the uh, Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda galaxy. Not the closest galaxy to the Milky Way galaxy, our own, but the closest big galaxy, so it shows up the best. Right, so number two is Andromeda. You might have done this before, finding, finding your, uh, your blind spot in your eye. Hold the piece of paper far away from you, like at arm's length. Cover your left eye, your left eye, and then stare at the number one, and move the piece of paper towards you, and you should find that the number two disappears. Stare at the number one, move the piece of paper towards you, and stop when the number two disappears. Ah, oh, so weird. Why does that happen? There we go, yeah, it just blinks out. Um, why that happens is, in the back of your eye, you've got loads of different cells. You've got cones, which detect color, and you've got rods which can't see colour but are much more sensitive. I'm going to say better. They can't see colour but they're really sensitive so they're, they are the ones that work at night. If you turn the lights off and the room's completely black you're actually seeing in black and white because your cones aren't sensitive enough to see in the dark. Your rods are the ones that are really kicking in. They can't see colour but they're very sensitive. So there's a patch in the back of your eye where there aren't any rods or cones because it's where your optic nerve is. I'll show you a picture. Look. So we have done a whole uh, lesson on the eye before. This is where there's a, just a big optic nerve going to your brain. So there's no cells there at all. It's not a great system to be honest, but evolution is what we're stuck with. So there's no receptor cells, no rods or cones. That's your blind spot. We've done that activity before. I knew that. What I didn't know was that most of the colour receptors, the cones that make you see colour, are kind of right in the middle of your eye. And the rods, the ones that see in black and white but are very sensitive, they're on either side. So what NASA are saying, here's how you see a galaxy. It works best apparently with a telescope, but you might be able to detect it a little bit with your eyes. Um, if you're, say, looking straight at the Andromeda galaxy, if you're looking straight at number two, then you, you won't be able to see it that well because that two image is being projected into like the middle of your eye where the cones are and the cones are sensitive yeah so what NASA say is you need to look to the side now if you look to the side and look at number one number two the galaxy completely disappears because it goes into your blind spot but if you look at the number three then the image of the two gets projected to the other side of your eye where there's loads of cells. This is quite more complicated than I thought it was when I started trying to teach you it. But basically you want the image of the galaxy, the number two in our case, to appear here, yeah? So what we've done already is we've put it there and it went away. You don't want to look at it because it'll be there and that's where the colour receptors are. You need to get the image to 
the side of your eye. It's called a verted vision technique. So if you're looking at a through a telescope at Andromeda Galaxy, the best thing to do is if you're looking with your left eye, look slightly away from your nose. So stare, put it pretty much in the same place as it was where you found your blind spot and stare at the number two and move your eye to the number three. Do you think the number two gets brighter? Apparently it's supposed to get brighter. Sort of stand out more. I think maybe, I don't know. I feel like now I've read it, then I can see it. But anyway, that's called averted vision technique. Let's look at how you find Andromeda Galaxy in the sky. Here we go. So there's this constellation called Cassiopeia, which I swear I've never seen before. And after teaching this lesson, um, I went out into my garden thinking, oh, but I'll never, oh, there it is. It's really obvious. I don't know how I've never been able to see it before. I live in quite a built up area, even when it's not totally dark, if it's a clear night, you should be able to make out from the UK, certainly, this sort of big W in the sky. And that is the constellation Cassiopeia. And if you follow the pointiest bit of the W along to kind of where it's pointing in this arrow shape, you get to the Andromeda Galaxy. So here, because we learned in our constellations lesson, constellations are really just patches of sky. Here is the IAU's like official sort of, I don't know, it's not a picture, is it, of what Cassiopeia is. There's a W. There's the Andromeda Galaxy. What I thought was really interesting, I can't believe this works. I found a photo that someone had taken. Can you see the Andromeda Galaxy on this photo? Three, two, where's the galaxy? One, yeah, there it is. Look, that beautiful smudge, which is actually billions of stars. Um, so obviously, if it's actually, if you're looking up at night, you probably won't be able to see that very well. You'll have to find Cassiopeia to point you in the right direction. And Cassiopeia, I couldn't find it for ages in this photo. And I suddenly realised it's because I was expecting it to look like it looked on the diagrams. No, it's space, isn't it? There's no up or down. Cassiopeia is, can you see it? W in the sky? It's here. There you go. So it works, doesn't it? This is an actual photo. Here's Cassiopeia, and that arrow is pointing towards Andromeda. But what I was very excited by is if you get this picture from the IAU website and you crop it to what you need and you make it a little bit see-through and you project it on this photo, then look, it works. Humans, aren't we amazing? We've just catalogued the sky. Isn't that beautiful? So yeah, that's how you find Andromeda Galaxy. And a few hot tips. <laughs> If you're going to go out and look for it, which I most certainly am every single day of some holidays, um, it takes your rods, the really sensitive cells in the back of your eye, half an hour to warm up. Now, I knew this. I knew that if you're standing in the darkness, then after half an hour, you'll be able to see more things in the darkness than you could at first, because finally your rods are working properly. I knew this. But have I ever gone into my garden and waited half an hour? No, of course I haven't. You just look up and go, oh, the stars are nice. And then you go back inside. No, if you want to be a star spotter, you've got to stay in darkness for half an hour. And as soon as you see a light, like all the work's undone and you, your rods are kind of wiped and you've got to start again. So you can't stand out there for 15 minutes and then like text your mate or something and go, hmm, I'm just waiting to be able to see the stars properly. No half an hour in total darkness and then your eyes will be at full capacity. Other things I didn't realise, um, hopefully this isn't an issue for you, but smoking or drinking alcohol uh, makes your eyes less sensitive. Drinking caffeine, so tea or coffee, slightly dilutes your eyes and makes them not work quite as well. So a true star spotter will take a flask of soup out instead of a flask of tea or coffee. So loads, apparently there's loads of different things you can do. Um, one website recommended just during the day, looking at a tree in the distance, and trying to count the different branches on the tree. Apparently there's loads of ways you can practice so that your eyesight gets a lot better. It's much easier to see these things. Right, that is nearly the end, you lot. Those are my hot tips for what to spot in the sky and how to spot them. I'll give you my ad and then we'll do the GCSE questions, eh? So if you are enjoying these uh, lessons, then sorry, that was the last one before the summer holidays. But it's okay, I'm gonna spend about six weeks planning and writing very busily. And then in the September term, we're going to do, I think the next module is going to be working scientifically. So we're going to look at like graph drawing, drawing tables, doing experiments, making sure they're fair, that kind of thing. We'll do that first of all. I'm going to start doing some IGCSE physics lessons. So if you've uh, 
if you fancy jumping into those, they're going to be free as well. So you just come, even if you're not planning on doing an IGCSE, it might be interesting. Um, and yes, if you'd like to support me, then you can go to the About section on this YouTube channel and click sign up and it'll take you to this website where you can support me with five or six pounds a month. It's pretty good value for using lessons. And I'll send you Theatre of Science magazine. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's got crafts. It's got cartoons. My husband graphically designs it for me. It's got quizzes. The next bumper issue is on seeds. It's going to be quite a lot of very, very, very small free gifts with the bumper summer seeds issue, which is out in August. But if you sign up now, I'll send you send you a couple of back issues and some rainbow glasses and maybe some badges as well and and then you'll get the seeds issue when it comes out thank you everyone who is supporting me uh, i was gonna say it makes a big difference it doesn't make a big difference it is literally how i can do this job if i wasn't getting paid i could not do my job so much appreciated right here are your gcse questions <sighs> i was so proud of them and now i've done them twice on facebook people have pointed out a few not mistakes but some of them are a bit vague let's see how you go Question one, which of the following does not orbit Earth? Which of those does not orbit Earth, doesn't go round the Earth? Is it moon, comet, satellite or International Space Station? A photographer took a picture of the Andromeda galaxy. They said it looks the brightest because it's closest to our own galaxy. Explain why the photographer is not quite right. Question three, I was really pleased with this <laughs> and now I'm not so sure. What do a comet, a planet and a satellite have in common? What do a comet and a planet and a satellite have in common? Is it that none of them give off light? None of them orbit the sun? None of them can be seen with the naked eye? Or they all appear to move across the sky? I was sure that it was a really obvious one answer and a couple of people have given me another answer. So it's like one of two choices there. If you can justify it and tell me why you think it's right, then that's fine. And for your summary questions, I just want you to summarise this lesson, really. Make eight cards fold a piece of paper in half three times, so you've got eight rectangles, and then write on them satellite, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, plane, star, comet and meteor, and make some bullet points as to how you spot each one of those objects in the sky. While you're doing those questions, I'll try and do uh, that last question with you. I've done three. How are you going on? I've done Star, Mars and Venus. Uh, I'll do... I won't do all of them. You can do some. On your own. Oof, there we go. Right, should we go through the answers? Which of the following does not orbit Earth um, it's a comet. A comet doesn't orbit Earth. It helped if you came to last week's lesson. Some people, smarties, pointing out that some moons don't orbit Earth, do they? Like Jupiter's moons don't orbit Earth, but the, the moon is in a capital letter. So I think it's, you should know that that is Earth's moon, but obviously not all moons orbit Earth. Uh, why is it not quite right to say that Andromeda is the brightest in our sky because it's the closest? Well, Andromeda is the closest large galaxy. There are other galaxies that are closer to us, but they're smaller, so they're not as bright. What do a comet, a planet and satellite have in common? Well, I've put none of them give off light, but I probably should have said 
like none of them produce light or none of them make their own light because if something reflects light is it giving off light I mean I don't think so I think that's okay but a lot of people were saying d they all appear to move across the sky now that is that is true actually if you stayed outside for like days <laughs> then you would definitely observe a comet and a planet and a satellite moving but if you're just sort of doing some spotting outside for like an hour you, you pro they wouldn't look like they were moving but if you said d then i forgive you <laughs> okay let's go through a little summary because uh i'm quite excited about having some dark clear skies during the summer holidays i'm going to france as well I'm going to stay in the absolute middle of nowhere with my friend in France. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to do some live streams, probably of me just like showing you a fuzzy white dot and screaming, ah, I'm in a galaxy. Here we go. Let's have a look. If you want a quick summary, then I've got uh, stars twinkle and they're white and they're not moving. Mars does not twinkle. It's red and it's not moving. Venus, you won't see Venus at night and it's not twinkling and it's bright white. A satellite is white, but it's moving and it's not twinkling. What else have we got? Um, what can you remember about Jupiter? Jupiter, well, I'm gonna look out for Jupiter. Yeah, again, it's quite easy to get like free apps that you can put on a phone that you look up at the sky and you know where things are. Although then you've got to put it away and wait half an hour. But Jupiter is yellow, obviously it wouldn't be twinkling and it wouldn't be moving. Um, <clears throat> and Saturn as well, but you'd have to have better eyes for that. A comet, I won't bother doing a comet, we know what a comet looks like, don't we? And a meteor, I suppose, is a good one. But Because there's a meteor shower heading our way very, very soon, like in the next few days, if it hasn't started already, the Besaid meteor shower will be starting, where Earth spins through the tail of a comet, and we see lots more meteors, lots of bits of stuff burning up in the atmosphere. Uh, so look out for that. They will, they're just white aren't they and they move fast and then disappear i think you'll know if you've seen a shooting star i'm not gonna i can't spell disappear i'm going to write go okay that's enough i'm not gonna bother doing comet what was the other one uh oh a plane we all know this. if it's red and green and flashing then it's an airplane all right you lot thank you so much for coming like i say that was the last one before the summer holidays, I'll make sure that I put some stuff up on uh, Facebook and elsewhere saying what we're doing next term when I've decided. Thank you so much for all your support. Truly the best job in the world. If you've got any suggestions, if there's anything more that I, if you're not supporting, but there's something simple that I could offer that would bring you on board for supporting, let me know. If there's anything that you want to do that I haven't done, then it's probably not just you thinking it. It's probably lots of people thinking it. So all the messages, asking for things really help in fact the only reason i'm doing lots of stuff is because someone asked the only reason there were free worksheets with this lessons is because someone said be really useful to have that written down so oh yeah okay that's easy so yeah let me know and uh, otherwise have a fabulous summer and i'll see you very soon bye <laughs>